What's going on guys? I haven't made a video for a while and I figured uh, some people might be kind of interested in this. Um, I kind of wanted to go over all of the sealed Pokemon trading card game booster packs that I've got. Um, I used to collect these cards as a kid. Um, got back kind of interested in it again in college. Um, I don't really buy the new cards anymore, but um, back in college I kind of got an interest in obtaining some of the sealed boosters and I ended up getting quite a few of them, at least of uh, the Wizards of the Coast series as well as some of the early Nintendo sets, but I uh, figured we'd just go through them, see what I got, see what I'm missing, and uh, some of that stuff. So starting off, we got the original three artworks for the base set. Uh, obviously some of these are in different formats, you know, some of these had the uh, hang tab extended uh, top part, some of them were just straight out like a booster box or whatever. It's interesting to look because some of them are not cut very straight. Um, there's a lot of variation you'll notice, and especially these old Wizards, uh, Wizards of the Coast sets. There's a lot of like different ones that are cut this way or have a different kind of glue seal on them. They're all over the place depending on uh, where they were being sold at and what they were made for. So, first expansion, of course, is the Jungle set, classic. Um, same here. I got a hang tab one for one of them. Uh, one of them's a first edition, but my, my main goal with this was just to get the different um, pack artworks. That was really the big thing. Moving on, we've got the Fossil set. Same thing, none of these are first edition, just the three arts. Zapdos, Aerodactyl, and Lapras. Then we move on to the very first like reprint set, I guess you would say. Um, which I believe just combined the previous three sets into one. So this one's not really a popular one. This is probably one of the cheaper ones I'm guessing to get the packs for. I thought it was kind of cool that I got them all in the hang tab version. I love the artwork though. Uh, Ken Sugimori is the guy who drew up all the original like monsters artwork. And you'll see that in a lot of these old boosters. It's just his artwork on it, which I really do like. Um, and there's actually a few sets that we'll get to that are exclusively in that artwork style. But most of the sets generally have multiple different artists just because there's... You know, 80, 90 cards in a lot of these old ones. It's a lot of things for people to draw. So, But these are all the original Ken Sukumori artwork, and I believe all of these previous ones have been uh, been his artwork as well. So pretty cool. Uh, here's one of the sets that is probably one of my lesser favorites, uh, Team Rocket. There are three other pack arts. Actually, the different artworks are just these three little slivers here. So one with Jesse James and Meowth. One with uh, Gyarados, and one with Giovanni and his Persian. At some point I could buy those, but they're not, it just doesn't seem worth it at this point. It's just like, I don't know. I, I'm not that crazy about that set. It'd be cool to have the complete one, because I would complete pretty much all the original stuff that I have here, but at the same time, it's not really worth the money, and wasn't really worth it to me then, back when these were cheaper, and now, I don't know, it's kind of hard to justify. But moving on. We've got Jim Heroes, which I only have one of. Um, I actually have a Misty one on the way here in the mail, but um, these ones are kind of, some people like these sets, a lot of people I don't think were as crazy about them because they're all where the Pokemon have like an owner. So it's like Brock's Geodude, Brock's Onyx, Misty's Golduck, whatever. I think they're cool, and this is one of those sets that is, wow, that wind is going crazy, sorry about that. Um, this is a cool set because all of the cards have Ken Sugimori's artwork for it, which I kind of appreciate, so I do like that aspect of it, but it's not a super popular set as far as I know, at least over here in the States. Then the sequel to it was Gym Challenge, so this had the other four gym leaders stuff, uh, Koga, Sabrina, Blaine, and Giovanni, so I do have all of these. I, I could see myself trying to get the other two, well, Misty's on the way, so yeah, the other two, um, so Lieutenant Surgeon Erica artworks, could see myself maybe doing that just depends i can find them for a decent price maybe moving on into probably my favorite generation of pokemon the johto series so this is the neo series there are four neo sets um, so we got neo genesis here and i like how they did the uh the gold and silver um, for like the color of the packs there to represent that that's kind of fun Moving on to the second set of those is the Neo Discovery set. Some pretty cool artwork here. Once again, that's all Ken Sugimori doing all the Pokemon, but I love that Scizor. As well as this Umbreon one, that one's pretty sweet. And I got a couple of the Zatu ones. 
Uh, this is kind of off topic, but here's the Japanese versions of Neo Genesis and Neo Discovery. And a couple really interesting ones here. This is the Versus set, which is basically the third gym challenge series that was only in Japan. Now, as a kid, um, one of my local card shops back when I lived, where I lived as a kid, had some of these in the case. And I recognized, like, the psychic, you know, icon or whatever, and I was like, okay, that, that is Pokemon, right? So I bought some of these as a kid, and these are all, like, half decks, so I think you get 30, yeah, there are 30 cards in each of them. And you're guaranteed, like, there's, like, one of... I think there's like four hollows for each one. There is a third one of these, so this is like the psychic and um, I don't know what I thought it was two types usually, but I don't know if it's psychic and fighting maybe, because then this one's grass and electric, and then there's also a third one that's uh, water and fire, I believe, and it has uh, the gym leader uh, Claire on the cover of it. Um, but I love Johto. I, I like the characters in Johto, so it'd be fun once again to get that third one, but it's like, it's like a $150, $200 pack. And it's like, eh, is that worth it for that? I don't know. But these are cool to have. I also have an empty booster box of this one, so that'll be a different video. Um, but yeah, these are pretty special to me, so I, I enjoy having those. So, moving on next, one of my favorites of the Neos, Neo Revelation. Love the artwork, love the consistency. Um, it's the uh, burned tower here from the game, you know, where the three dogs were, like, created by Ho-Oh or whatever, however that worked in the story, but I really like that. And if you uh, look at the booster box, there's a little bit more artwork pertaining to that, so that's kind of cool. And probably one of the best Neo sets. I don't know if I'd rank this one or... or uh, Revelation highest, but Neo Destiny, a lot of great cards here, a lot of really cool secret rares. Uh, this is the set that had, I think, some of the Shining uh, Pokemon, if I remember right, like Shining Charizard, uh, Shining Celebi, Shining Gyarados was a secret rare of the Revelations ones, I believe, but pretty sure this one had like Shining Charizard, some pretty expensive cards, really cool ones. Um, they're ones where like the number is like above the, the actual count, so there's like whatever, say there's like 64 cards in this set, the secret rares are like 65, 66, and so on, so these are pretty cool, love the artwork once again, Togetic, Noctowl, Tyranitar, and Celebi. Here we are for another reprint set, this one however is a very expensive one and a very sought after one, uh, mostly because this is the first set that introduced um, like reverse hollows, I guess they're technically considered. They're kind of crazy looking reverse hollows, but they are reverse hollows, the original iteration of them. They make it honestly kind of hard to read the cards because they're all over the cards and they're just crazy. Uh, but yeah, these are very expensive. I got a really good deal. I, when I was collecting all these, I kind of established in a relationship with this uh, store that was selling stuff on eBay. And I would message them and ask them to you know, keep an eye out for certain sets. And they did have some of these, so they gave me a good deal because I had bought quite a few of these from them. Not all of them but a good portion of them so they hooked me up which was really nice of them um, I, I kind of wish they were still selling cards because they would be the the one place I would definitely want to go to for uh, for sealed boosters but yeah so that's cool that's a really cool one to have that's a very expensive um, just set in general um, but pretty sweet and now we're moving on into the last three sets by wizards um, and these are some of the fan favorite ones um, these introduce kind of these more 3D rendering for the uh, pack artwork, as you can see. But they also have some really great artwork on the cards themselves. Um, these also are the very first of the e-reader series cards, which I enjoyed a decent amount. Uh, there's some good artwork. It's not the Ken Sugimori style, but at the same time, there's some really cool stuff. Um, all three of these sets are very expensive, but this is Expedition. Expedition, excuse me. Note, the other thing is that they only have nine cards in each of these now because of the e-reader functionality. I think that was their that was their excuse for it, but still, these are great sets. This one's probably my least favorite of the three, but still, there's a lot of great artwork in this one. Aquapolis, some really cool ones, some great secret rares. These also, another note with these sets is that um, they introduced where they have like so many cards in the set where it's just can't even imagine how many packs you'd have to buy or how many people you'd have to trade with to get like the full set because there's like 
like 32 hollows and then there's 32 non hollow rares like of the same Pokemon and um, they introduce the um, reverse hollows even more commonly in these they're like every pack but they're easier to read that sort of thing so but yeah Aquapolis is pretty sweet and then <laughs> probably the most expensive sealed pack that you'll find I don't know if legendary is more expensive probably Sky Ridge this is one of my favorite sets as a kid I bought a bunch of these back in the day and opened them whenever I could just because I loved the artwork so much and ask any old school Pokemon card fan Sky Ridge was definitely one of the best ones um, all three of these sets or at least these two for sure introduced some of the crystal Pokemon secret rares I remember as a kid pulling a uh, crystal Celebi card from one of these I still have that in the hard case or whatever that's one of my favorites but I just have two of these they're so expensive um, it's unbelievable how much they've they've uh, become on eBay I still got these when they were not ridiculous like I, I still probably paid like 70 80 bucks for them but not nearly what they are now but yeah there's another one it's a uh, Kabutops and I believe a Vaporeon so missing that one but still really cool to have those two and fortunately probably won't be getting the other ones unless I hit the lottery <laughs> Now up here I got a couple blister packs, which these were what you'd see in like Target or Walmart oftentimes. Generally these are going to be sitting in like a card shop or a place that has like a glass case because they would just have a booster box and just pull these out and just, you know, either price them individually like some of these have or just have a price in front of them and say, you know, it's three bucks a pack, whatever. But these ones are the ones you'd see in like the, the weird nerdy aisle at like Target with all the baseball cards and all the other collectible crap. But, yep, so I got a Neo Genesis one there, Jungle, and a Fossil one. And then this had, it's kind of unrelated, but it is sealed, so I figured I'd show it. It's a uh, Japanese version of one of the tropical, or the uh, Southern Islands uh, sets. There were six different ones of these, so that's kind of cool. So I'd throw that in there. And then, moving on, so this is when Nintendo took over. Uh, the very first ones that they did were Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, there are two other packs of these, I believe. I know there's one with a layer on on it. I can't remember what the other one is, but I just got a couple of them. Just I'm not as attached to these sets, but I still enjoy them. Some of these early ones are still pretty good, but not like the Wizards ones. I guess I, I didn't buy them as much. Really where I fell off with collecting these was probably when like Diamond and Pearl came out, I would say. Um... So, yeah, there's still a lot of good sets with these uh, Ruby and Sapphire ones. I love Ruby and Sapphire. So the next one was Sandstorm. As you can see, we are back to the Ken Sugimori style artwork. Pretty clear to, once you know what you're looking at, I guess, to point out whether or not it's his. But I like that a lot. And then at this point, we're away from that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure from here on out, we don't get that anymore. But this is Dragon. Uh, a couple other pack arts for this one and Sandstorm. At, at this point... I'm pretty sure we always have four different artwork styles. It's really just these early sets leading up to uh, base set two, I guess, was probably the first one to do that. But like Fossil, Jungle, Base, they had three. But yeah, pretty much from here on out, they're all four as far as I know. And I'm pretty sure they still do that. I don't know the new cards super well, but pretty darn sure. Uh, but there's one with like an Absol and there might be one with a Rayquaza on it. can't remember. Same thing with Sandstorm. I don't know what the heck they were, but it's cool. This is kind of a weird one. It's kind of a throwback to the gym, uh, the gym series or gym challenge ones. Um, but Team Magma versus Team Aqua. I honestly forgot that I had all four of these, but these are ones you just never see or hear much about. And see, this one's kind of cool. It's got three ninety nine sticker on it. I wanted to leave that on there just because that's what it'd look like if it was sitting in like a glass case in like a booster box or something at you know your card store, game store, whatever. So. <laughs> And then uh, next we got EX Hidden Legends. So these are the ones with Reggie Rock, Reggie Ice, Reggie Steel. And I don't know what the fourth one is, if there is one. And I just have an emerald one with uh, Kyogre there. Um, that's really the main ones I've got. There's also a set um, Deoxys, which I thought would be kind of fun to get. But I haven't seen any of those. And if I do, they're usually really expensive. Or they're from like Europe or some other country where it's not in English, which I'm not really that interested in. Um, if I could, I would get uh, some of the Deoxys ones, as well as um, some of the Heart Gold and Soul Silver, just because I love Gold and Silver, you know, Johto Pokemon. But 
they're expensive or hard to find again. Uh, here's a couple other ones. So these two are, I believe, Korean ones. You can get booster boxes of these. Five cards in a pack. I think they have like 30 packs or 36 or something. They're pretty interesting. Um, obviously the cards themselves not really worth nearly as much as an American one or a Japanese one, but they're still cool. They're fun. They're I don't think I paid more than like 20 bucks or something for the booster box, so it's kind of fun to just open those packs and not feel like guilty about it because they're not worth anything, but I saved a couple of them. I love the artwork on them. I don't even know this Pokemon's name, but I think it's a legendary one in like the, uh, what the heck, is it Sun and Moon series maybe? Now obviously, oh, oh, they're looking pretty sweet with Charizard. So, yep, it's kind of interesting. And then this is a Japanese one, which I don't remember the name of this set um, but I had seen someone open a box of them and these cards have kind of like this cool white border around them um, so I bought a booster box of that once again not as expensive as like an American booster box but still more expensive <laughs> than the uh, Korean ones so yeah so that that's kind of all I really wanted to show I just figured uh, this is a lot of the stuff I actually have like in a safe just because it this is expensive stuff you do not want to lose this or uh, get it stolen or anything I mean it's I don't want to say a number because I, I honestly don't know, but I know each of these individual ones are pretty hard to find nowadays, and even if you do find them, you're going to pay a pretty penny for a lot of them. So, But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I was really just, um, just kind of document this, show it to people. I also have a bunch of uh, empty booster boxes and empty like um, theme deck boxes, some of that. I figured I might do a video of those too just because kind of fun I bought a lot of those as a kid just because they came with a guaranteed holographic card and I was like well I could take my chances with like a booster or two or just get the theme deck because they were only like eight ten bucks something like that so uh, I have a bunch of those I figured it'd be kind of fun to show them in a different video too but anyway guys hope you enjoyed have yourself a wonderful day see you later